That's what happens when you are a lover of God. You become untouchable by the agents of the devil. Years ago in the old church, some individuals gathered themselves together and they said, we must stop this man. Speaking of God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, we must stop this man. Three of them. One of them a local leader. One of them was going to sponsor the, uh, you know, attempt. And then the other one was going to provide moral support, <laughs> communal support. Three of them gathered together. They held the first meeting. They organized the plan. This is how we are going to stop this man. Now, a lover does not need to know where the attack is coming from. He doesn't need to know. He had no idea. But right when God saw a plan against his lover, he started smacking them one by one. The first one who was going to provide the local communal support and so forth, that one, the first son, 42 year old, one day shouted, my head, my head, my head, fell down, died. While they were still recovering from that one, the second son, 40 year old, my head, my head, my head, fell down and died. God was fighting. The one who was going to sponsor lost everything. All his properties, everything lost. It was so bad that some of the properties he owned were sold to the church without the church knowing. Eventually he landed in prison and the third one just dissipated. No one could find him anywhere. How did this all come to pass? When the one of us went to go and minister in prison, prison ministration. The one who was to sponsor was in the prison. He said, let me tell you a story. This is what happened. And this is how I ended here. Hi guys, this is the Maker Anselm and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. I really hope that my videos have always been a blessing to you. And I thank you for always coming back and back again to my channel to watch my content. All right, let's get back to this video and be blessed. Cheers. God fighting on the behalf of a lover. When you are a lover, God is your avowed defender. Somebody hearing my voice today, as your love is rekindled the flesh, God will arise to defend you. In the places your voice cannot sound, in the places your hands cannot reach, in the places your feet cannot step to, God will arise to fight on your behalf. Somebody believe he said the loudest, amen. I said God will arise to fight on your behalf. So stay in love with God. Number five, remain committed to serving God faithfully. Remain committed to serving God faithfully. You see, those who serve God will always retain God. Those who serve him. If you look at what Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 28, as he was departing, he said to the disciples from verse 19 to 20, look at it very closely. Jesus speaking. He said, go to all the world, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And as you are serving me like this, he said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. Those who serve God can't lack his presence. You can't serve him and lack him. If you serve him, you continue to retain his presence. And his presence is the greatest of defenses. So serving God faithfully is one of the vital requirements to having God fight on your behalf. I pray for somebody hearing my voice this morning. As your service is sustained and his presence is maintained, every one of the battles of your life will be brought to an eternal end. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said every one of the battles of your life will be brought to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, engage the altar of prayer and fasting to provoke divine intervention. The altar of prayer and fasting to provoke divine intervention. So you can call on God to intervene. You can call on him to step in. Engage the altar of prayer and fasting. We saw it in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3 down to verse 12. They gathered together, they prayed, they fasted, and then God came and spoke in verse 17 and said, you will not need to fight in this battle. So you can engage the platform of prayer and fasting to invoke divine intervention. Shout hallelujah. 
I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's so important. You can invoke it to, to secure divine intervention. That is one of the purposes for engaging the prayer platform. And that can be amplified through fasting. As we do so, we see God intervening on our behalf. That will be somebody's experience from now in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe we say a loud amen. amen. I said you believe we say a loud amen. amen. Number seven is secure his presence for an ever winning life. And we do that particularly through praise. Secure his presence for an ever winning life. And we do that primarily through praise. Praise is the environment for God's manifest presence. If you want to see God manifesting, if you want to see God walking his wonders, then engage in praise. Engage in praise. Engage in praise. I've discovered something. If you, if you are you know, familiar with combat sports, boxing, and so forth, you discover that when you are fighting, when you are entering to the ring, they put a mouth guard in the mouth of the fighter, two of us. They are not expecting him to be talking inside the ring, so they block his mouth. And they use that to protect all his teeth. So he's there, he's fighting, they are boxing him, they are boxing. It is when he comes out of the ring that they can remove his mouth guard. It means... When your mouth is blocked from praise, you are the one fighting. When your mouth is open to praise, God is the one fighting. Anytime you close your mouth, there's no praise. You are just complaining. Boom, they hit me here. Bam, they hit me there. Bam, they hit me here. Ah, this man is strong. Go, God. You are the one fighting. You will be, you will be eating blue. But when you come out of the ring and you remove the mouth guard that is stopping your praise and you now are opening your mouth to celebrate God, that means you have stepped out and God has stepped in. Is somebody getting it this morning? So whatever silences your praise has pushed you inside the ring to fight by yourself. That's why Satan will always make you complain. He will want to make you continue to see what is not right. But God is saying, come out of the ring. Let me step in. Come out of the ring. Let me come in. And when God comes into the ring, you only have one duty. Stay outside and keep celebrating him. Have you ever seen tag team wrestling before? In tag team wrestling, you have two fighters. Normally one is big, one is small. When the small one sees that the fight is bigger than him, he goes to tap the hand of the big fighter and he jumps out of the ring. And the big one jumps into the ring to fight. The only duty of that small fighter is to stand outside and be hailing the big one. Because if the big man gets angry and fighting, you are not talking. And he comes to tap him. He has to enter the ring and the big one jumps out. If you want God to keep fighting for you, you better keep praising him. If not, he will tap you and you jump in and he jumps out. Say with me, God, keep fighting. I will keep praising you. I will keep celebrating you. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. So the equation is simple. The equation is simple. I like winning, but I don't like fighting. And because I like winning and I don't like fighting, I need somebody to help me fight. So what does that mean? I must keep praising. If I keep praising, he keeps fighting. If he keeps fighting, I keep winning. So what must I do? Keep praising. Never get tired of praising God. Never retire from praising God. Never, re never, never refrain from praising God. Let praise continuously be in your lips. That's why David said, he said that the praise, let the, let the two-edged sword be in their hand and their praise in their lips to execute vengeance. So as we are praising him, God keeps fighting on our behalf and victory is secured on our behalf. That will be our experience in the...